Mel Robbins is a best-selling author and according to speaking.com is the most booked female speaker in the world. She went from being an unemployed 41-year-old facing bankruptcy to impacting the lives of millions of people through her books and speeches and becoming one of the highest paid speakers in the world. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men all my life. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Mel Robbins and my take on her top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, start before you're ready. One of the things that I've learned in my business is that the mistakes are where all the learning is. And actually the mistakes and the imperfect stuff, that's where the gold is, everybody. And so as you're sitting there and you're thinking about doing stuff and you're trying to make it perfect and you're trying to come up with the right script before you make that cold call or you're trying to make sure your body looks perfect before you put yourself out there on match, you are missing out on your life, period. And so I hope that if there's one thing that I consistently inspire you to do, it's to start before you're ready. It's to put yourself out there and make mistake. It's to have yourself go live and have it look like crap and all of a sudden you disconnect yourself and to be able to laugh at yourself, to be able to shake it off. Like that is a skill. It's a skill that, that means that you're self-aware. It's a skill that means that you're growing. Rule number two, don't run away. There's a lot of you that are running from things instead of running to things. And that's a huge difference, running from something versus running to something. And so I want you to think about that for a minute um, because you don't have to move across country to change your life. And you don't have to do something drastic to experience drastic positive change. And here's the thing about running away from your problems, running away from your past. Have you ever noticed that when you run away, it tends to follow you? You know, I used to uh, have this problem in relationships. And the reason why I had this problem is because I was a very unhappy person. I didn't like myself truly as a person until probably four or five years ago. I spent, as, as sad as this is, I spent the first 46 years of my life really not liking myself, really um, feeling like I wasn't a good person, really questioning the sanity of people that were in love with me or that were friends of mine because I had such a low opinion of myself. And it didn't matter. You know, I, I was guilty not of moving from one city to another, but I was guilty of moving from one person to another that I would literally get in a relationship, I would be in a relationship for a year, and then I would start to feel that unsettled feeling. Because what happens after a year of being in a relationship? Well, you gotta start working on it. It's no longer the thrill and the delight, and it's new and you're dating. Now it's just you and the person in your life. There's nothing new about it. And so all your old crap starts to show up and that's when you got to start to do the work. And so it was about the year or the year and a half mark in almost every single relationship that I would start getting that itchy feeling. And the reason why I was getting that itchy feeling is because my past was now there. This new relationship was no longer new. And so I was no longer distracted by it. And I was going to have to deal with myself in order to be happy. And so what did I do for years? Not even just years, decades, everybody. I'm not, I'm not proud to admit this, but I would literally jump out of one relationship and into another new one because another new one would distract me from the fact that I was an unhappy person. True story. And I think a lot of you who are unhappy with yourselves are looking to move jobs or looking to move uh, the city that you live in, or you're looking to change your relationship. And the problem isn't where you live. The problem isn't your job. The problem isn't the person that you're with. The problem is 
how you feel about yourself. Rule number three, validate, separate, and celebrate. If you're not facing a breakup personally in your romantic life, you still want to pay attention because somebody that you care about might be. And this is advice that you can give to them. Also, breakups uh, happen in your career. Um, you might be breaking up with a work situation. You might be breaking up with a friend. I know a lot of us are working hard to draw boundaries and to surround ourselves with more positive people. And we get questions every day about how you do that. And so breaking up with friends can be just as traumatic as breaking up with somebody that is a romantic partner. I have three steps to getting over a breakup that I'm going to explain in a minute. But first, I want to under, I want to explain some research to you to help you put what you're feeling into context. Because what you're going through when you break up with somebody or you're broken up with is you literally go through withdrawal. I'm not kidding. And yeah, I'm using the word withdrawal. Where else do you hear the word withdrawal? You hear the word withdrawal when you hear about people withdrawing from a drug. And that's a lot uh, similar to what you're going through. In fact, there was a study done by neuroscientist Lucy Brown, who found that like drug abuse, romantic love begins with that euphoric feeling. It's a high, right? And when the drug leaves your body or the romance leaves your life, what are you left with? You're left with the withdrawal, which is a craving for it. Validate. Number one, break, breakups are painful, but they don't need to lead you broken. So I want you to validate where you're at. It's great that you're asking the question. You got to have a little bit of compassion for yourself. You got to understand that you're going to be sad for a while, but please don't pour gasoline on the sadness fire. Please, please, please don't be staring at photos of your ex. Please don't be uh, putting his or her social media face right in front of your face. It's going to make it worse. But definitely validate the sadness because you're going through a major change and it might not be a change that you wanted. Number two, separate. This is the most important part because the other thing that I don't think any of us realize is that when you get broken up with or you break up with somebody, you don't realize how much of your daily routine and the habits that you have and the way that you go about your day was tied to the person that you're no longer with. And so what you're not only dealing with is not only missing the person, but your whole life schedule may have just been thrown off. Maybe you two went to the same gym in the morning. Maybe you got a text in the morning from this person. Maybe you liked your little FaceTime call at work. Maybe your friend group became their friend group. And now all of a sudden that you're broken up because you hung out with their friends all the time, you don't have that social life anymore. And so it is so important for you to recognize that you're not only facing the person being gone, but the habits that marked your day and the other people that maybe you hung out with and the things that you did with your time and the music that you listened to and the food that you ate, that those might have all been dictated by the person you were with and those are changing too. So it's important for you to separate yourself. I think a lot of women in particular, when we get into a relationship, we tend to lose ourselves. We tend to morph into the person that we're dating. I used to do that all the time. And so now we get to the third part. As you start to think about separating, right? So you're validating where you're at. You're separating from this person. We need to get to the third part, which is celebrating you. Now that you're broken up, you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to rediscover yourself because I guarantee you, you lost a bit of yourself in that relationship. And so as you think about the way that the structure of your day has changed, what can you proactively insert that is a celebration of the things that you stopped doing? What have you been keeping yourself from doing because you were in this relationship that would celebrate you? Who are the friends or family members or colleagues that really lift you up? And how can you find more time to hang out with them? This is a time to celebrate a moment when you get to rediscover you. Rule number four, learn to speak up. I've looked into the research. There's only one habit and skill, just one, that has a direct impact on how much money you make, a direct impact on whether or not you get the promotion and the influence and the cash money that you deserve. And do you know what that is? Any ideas? The one skill, the one habit, 
the one thing that has a meaningful behavior change that impacts what you get. It's your visibility. You see, you don't get credit, you don't get paid for, and you don't get graded on the things that people can't see. In order for you to get what you deserve, you have to start being deliberate about your visibility, behavior, that you gotta start learning to do, whether you're shy, whether you're introverted, whether English is your second language, it doesn't matter. You've gotta learn how to speak up. You've gotta learn how to share your ideas. You've gotta learn how to talk about your business. You've gotta learn to talk about your dreams and your goals, and I know for many of you, that is one of the most terrifying things in the world. You hate being the center of attention. The idea of speaking in a meeting at work and risking sounding like you don't know what you're talking about is really scary. The idea of asking for feedback from your boss or asking for a raise, really scary. The idea of going in and talking to your professor about adjusting your grade, really scary. The idea of raising your hand, I get it. I read your emails, I see the comments, but you've got to understand that this is the number one skill that you need in order to increase your visibility, wherever it is that you need to increase your visibility. Also, if you wanna have more confidence and motivation, check out my 254 series where every day for the next 254 days, I send you an amazing unlisted video to boost your confidence. The links to join are in the description below and they're free. If you don't listen to any feedback at all, guys, you're never gonna improve. You're not gonna ever do anything new. So no feedback means nothing new. When you have an intention on something that you want to change about your life, your brain helps you. In order to get to the next level in your business, you got to decide right now, what habits do you have as a leader that you have to change now? Rule number five, cut yourself a break. The world doesn't need another perfect person. The world needs you. And you're trying your best. You're doing what you can. And, you know, I think it's really important that you cut yourself a break and that you stop thinking that you have to be perfect. There are going to be days where you're an hour late to pick up your kid, and that's okay. There are going to be days when you can't get to every email, and that's okay. There are going to be days where you feel so underwater, and that's okay. You'll get through it. You'll figure it out. And you've got to understand that it's not about being perfect. It's about just being you. And that means that you got to be willing to start before you're ready. You got to be willing to do what I do every damn day, which is show up in my rollers or start a live stream and disconnect myself or start it and be talking and not even know that I'm broadcasting. You've got to do that version in your life or you're not going to get ahead, period. Rule number six, don't judge yourself. Instead of doing what so many of us do when we're broken up with and we go, I'm a loser. I'm unlovable. I'm not good enough. What I want you to do instead is I want you to put that opinion and judgment on the relationship itself. That relationship that's over wasn't good enough, wasn't worthy, and wasn't the right fit for love for you. Do not take that on as an internal judgment of yourself. Make sure that when you're judging it, you're judging the relationship and how it wasn't a good fit for you. You, my friend, are whole. You, my friend, are perfect how you are. And yeah, you may have to change. Yeah, you, there's things that you can do better now that you know better. Yes, there's baggage you got to deal with, but there's nothing wrong with you. There's just patterns that you need to deal with. Rule number seven, love the process of pursuing goals. You'll get the day where you celebrate, and that was yesterday, and you'll have that moment where you cannot believe that you actually got into the school that you wanted or you got the job that you wanted or you found the person that, that really compliments you finally or that you got the raise that you wanted or you built the house that you've always dreamt of and then a funny thing happens after you actually achieve the dream. After you celebrate, life goes right back to the way that it was. And for me, what I'm present to is not the fact that this talk show is actually happening. It's I'm focused on all the work that I now need to do in order to do the talk show as powerfully as I can. And I think that the point that I'm trying to make about the fact that, yeah, you can achieve all the things that you're going for, but I've even noticed already in just 24 hours, like that the crazy rise in emotion and excitement has already been replaced with things are back to normal. That is exactly what psychologists talk about when it comes to happiness, because happiness is not about achieving things. It's not about getting the result. It's about how you 
pursue the things that you enjoy and why you're pursuing them. And so the key to life, and I'm seeing it happen in my own life, is not actually checking the boxes and getting all those things that you dream about. It's how you go about living your life as you're pursuing them. Because if I were just gonna like, boop, check the box, and now I'm done, biggest goal of my life to have a daytime talk show, just achieve that, boop, what do I have to look forward to? Nothing if you've already achieved it, which is why it's so important for you to understand that the real meaning of happiness is about how you show up every day. Yes, you should have big goals. Yes, you should have big dreams. Yes, 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 and yes, you should pursue them. Don't, don't ever think that, quote, making your dreams come true is what actually makes you happy. Because what actually makes you happy is having those big dreams and waking up every morning and doing a little something to push yourself to make them happen. It's about the pursuit. Rule number eight, have empathy. It's really important for your personal boundaries to use what I always talk about, which is empathy. Understand that anybody that's acting out, it doesn't excuse the behavior, it explains it. And it also allows you to separate yourself emotionally. That person is likely miserable. That person has a bad life, which is why they treat people badly. And so if you can start to really use empathy to put it on them versus making it that they are doing something to you, that can help you from getting hooked emotionally. Rule number nine, be a fan. If you start shifting the dynamic, and here's how you do it. You do it by being a fan. What do I mean? I talk about this all the time. If you Google Mel Robbins being a fan, you'll probably come up with like 10 different videos on YouTube about this philosophy. It's a philosophy about leading with appreciation. It's a philosophy about cheering for other people publicly. Because what happens when you cheer for other people is you naturally trigger the law of reciprocity. And even the biggest jerk face, even the biggest curmudgeon, even the biggest, most competitive person on the planet, who might be competitive, by the way, because she's paying for her parents' nursing home bill, and she's feeling stressed out, and she's also divorced. I mean, who knows what's driving this competitive nature? Maybe it's a sense of scarcity and fear and insecurity. And so the opposite of competition isn't more competition, it's connection. And you create connection by cheering for people. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is have the courage to speak up. The majority of people lack self-awareness at work. You get that? The person who's disrespecting you likely doesn't even know what they're doing. The person who's taking his or her anger out on you likely doesn't know how it's impacting you. You see, when people do this, when they have these kind of toxic patterns, they've been getting away with them for so long because nobody has had the courage to cross-check them verbally on it. And that's where you come in. Lucky you. You're in their life because your purpose in their life is to be the one person that has the courage to actually sit down and have a candid conversation about it. So what are you going to do? How do you have that candid conversation? First of all, try not to make them wrong. Try not to come in and shame them and tell them all the horrible things they're doing because you'll immediately create a situation where they're defensive. And if the research bears out from Harvard Business School and they actually had no idea that they were doing it, they might get defensive. The better way to do it, the more effective way to do it is to explain how their behavior impacts you. And when you do that, most people are mortified because most people are venting or are disrespectful and they're not even thinking about the impact it has because nobody's ever told them. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, if you're still here watching and you promise, you commit that you're gonna take action after watching this video, you're not just gonna watch a video, you're gonna do something afterwards, give me a hashtag, but leave in the comments because I want to celebrate you. One of the things that is really important in life, and I wanna acknowledge my team because they're really good at it, this is my family, roll with it, roll with it. Um, if something doesn't go perfect, guess what? Roll with it. That is both my favorite hairstyle since I'm always putting rollers in, and it is my favorite philosophy in how you manage life. Just roll with it. Seriously, there's no such thing as perfect. There's only a perfect meltdown that you can cause for yourself if you cannot learn how to let go and roll with it.
If you want 10 more amazing rules from Mel, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. When people are passive aggressive or they give you fake compliments or they give you the silent treatment, typically that's fueled out of jealousy. Switch have to.